In this video, we'll explore how to easily add animations to your WPF app with the help of storyboards. Keep watching until the end of the video, where I'll also cover how to create animations in the code behind. Hey guys and welcome to Azul Coding. All the code in this video is available from the link in the description down below. Towards the end of the video, I'll be writing some C Sharp code to explain how to create storyboards in the code behind, and there's a VB.net translation of this that you can get from the link as well. Let's get the application set up first of all. To make creating animations easier, I'm going to be using Blend for Visual Studio, which includes a storyboard editor. But you can of course use any IDE to write the resulting XML code by hand. To install Blend, make sure you've ticked this box over here when installing Visual Studio. In the XML editor, I've already added in some elements that we'll be animating. Two rectangles that will move position some text that will fade in, and some buttons that we'll use to trigger the animations. So let's get started and explore the storyboard editor. I'm going to start with an animation that moves these overlapping squares apart. We can do this by adjusting the margin. To create a storyboard, which is essentially a collection of animations that we can play, pause, etc., click on this Add button in the Objects and Timeline pane. Then give your storyboard a name. I'll call it Moving Squares. Now, as you can see, a message appears saying that recording is on, and there's a red border around the editor. That means that we can make changes in the properties panel over here, and they'll be added to the storyboard. On the left is a timeline, and we can use this marker to seek through the storyboard timeline. Let's put the marker at one second, and select the green rectangle first. And then over on the right, I'll adjust the margin. And now if I play the animation, the square moves as intended. Let's do a similar sort of thing for the blue rectangle as well. And you can of course make as many property changes as you like, but we'll keep things fairly simple for now. If you take a quick look at the XML code, you can see the storyboard has been added to the Windows resources. It's essentially created a thickness animation, because we're animating the margin which has a thickness type, and it's added in the keyframes with the value being changed at one second. We can customise this keyframe in the properties panel, and apply an easing function for a smoother animation. Let's see how that looks. So we've created our storyboard, but how do we get it to play when the app is running? We can either run it manually in the code behind, and we'll come on to that later, or we can set up a trigger in the XML. For example, this trigger here will play the storyboard once the app loads. Let's run the app and see how it looks. And then we are, as the app loads, the animation occurs. Let's see if we can create an animation that happens after the user has done something like interacted with a button. We'll try a fade animation this time. I'll create another storyboard and call it fade animation. Then at, say, half a second, we'll set the opacity to 1, so that it'll be fully visible. And in the XML, it's used a double animation this time, because the opacity property is a simple double value. We can then create another storyboard for the reverse fade-out animation. So let's close this and copy the XML we just created. We can stick with a keyframes animation, but since we're just animating one value in a linear fashion, we can instead use a simple double animation, with a two property set to zero, and duration set to half a second. Now for the triggers. This time we'll want to fade the text in when the user hovers over the button, and fade it out when the cursor leaves the button. We can similarly use an event trigger as before with a mouse enter and mouse leave event respectively, but now we'll need to specify the name of the button in the source name property. Let's test it out. And as you can see the text fades in as I enter the button, and fades out as I leave it. Now we've created some animations in the storyboard editor, let's see how we can make them in the code behind. We can either use a storyboard that we've created in the XML or created with C Sharp or Visual Basic code. Let's look at the first option to start with. I've gone ahead and created a color animation storyboard, which changes the color of the squares like this. I've added a click event handler to the color button here, and in the code behind we can call begin storyboard and pass in the storyboard resource using the find resource function like so. I've also added a completed event handler to the storyboard in the XML. And so when the animation finishes, we can do something else like hide the color button for example. Let's run the app and see how it works. So as I click on the button, the colors of these squares change as expected, and the button is hidden right afterwards. But if we didn't want to create the storyboard in the XML, let's see how we can do it in the code behind with this new create storyboard function that I'm calling when the application starts. We'll first create the storyboard, and then we'll add a separate click event handler on the color button, so that when the user clicks on the button, it's going to call the begin function and start the animation. Make sure to pass the this keyword into the function, otherwise it won't be able to access the squares in the UI. I'll also reuse the completed event handler from earlier. 
If we take a look at the XML version, we essentially want to create a color animation using keyframes, set on the properties and add it in the keyframe. Let's start doing this for the green square first. And then we'll add the keyframe with the key time of 0.5 seconds and hex color value that we can convert like so. And then a similar sort of thing for the blue square as well. Let's come and add this line here and test it out. And then we are the animation still works. If you're looking for some example apps to use WPF animations, I've created a suite of desktop apps that are all open source. And if you're looking to become a polyglot, check out my language and insight that's 100% free. All the links are in the description down below. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to keep up to date with latest rules of coding. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.